think that means we're probably live. Oh yes, got it. It's being live streamed. I got a, I got a note. Mm -hmm. Okay. So while we're waiting for people to join up, Andy, do you want to look on your phone and see when people have started to join our meeting? Ah, I've got it in front of me now. There we go. Fantastic. And uh, Jordan should be sharing this with Rapido Trains Inc. Uh, in North America, we have a lot of UK followers there. I have to say that the buses look like antlers on the table behind you. <laughs> Very impressive. All righty. Got enough time to duck down now. <laughs> well, we have a couple of people following us. Excellent. Why don't we just have a little banter for a couple of minutes and, uh, you know, before we do a proper introduction. Um, how's the weather over there, by the way? Raining-ish. Oh, raining-ish. <laughs> raining Dill? It's yeah. nice here. Yeah, it's, you know, the ult ultimate uh, social distancing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Couldn't get much further away from you two, really, could we? <laughs> We actually have we have three countries represented in one Zoom meeting. Ah, oh, the wonders uh, of technology, aren't they great? Isn't they great? Wonderful. And we have a big blank space. I mean, we have it's almost like we should have a fourth person just to fill the blank space, but what can you do? Maybe Jordan will join us next time. And he can right. moderate the questions. I just imagine his questions. Um, what is a an HSDT? <laughs> <laughs> he knows nothing about British trains at all. Perfect. All right. How many people do we have following us now? More than two? Four. <laughs> it's a big crowd. <laughs> All right. Let's get started. Because we just to make sure it works, right? Facebook is not allowing us to edit this stuff out later. So people are going to have to sit through this whole banter to watch our Facebook Live. If you're watching this now and later on, it's very good to listen to this while working on your layout or working on a, a model. Uh, we will hopefully entertain you for the next little while. Uh, so uh, I am Jason Schron. I'm the president of Rapido Trains Limited, which is a UK company. Um, with me, uh, I'm in Canada. With me in Connecticut is Bill Schneider. He is uh, originally before the, the two yokels and the other picture showed up. Uh, he was running most of the UK projects and designing all of them. And uh, then looking at us from the UK, actually, is, uh, is Andy, who's in the green, shirt and Andy is our operations manager and then you've got um, Richard is our project development manager um, and uh, and also in charge of sales and promotions and stuff like that but I think everyone does a bit of everything at Rapido. All right. Excellent. Excellent. Right. So what have you guys got there uh, to show there? What have you got there? Um, well, we, first of all, we have a um, production, a sample from the fresh batch of APTEs, which you may or may not be able to see because it's, it's, it's quite small. Um, we've got a painted Hunslet, which we'll be able to show you later. We've got gunpowder vans, Chatham wagons. Uh, there's a model rail pony tank there as well. You got, you got samples, like test samples from the factory, the APTE? Yeah. Yeah. So oh, I, uh, I've got, no, I got to see those. I gotta see those. All right, now I got. Now I'll, but I'll, 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 okay, I'm gonna find a way to come there. I just yeah, wait. Yeah. I'm only seven hours away. Wait, I'll, I, I'm gonna find a way to come there. Here we go again. Well, and while it? we're waiting, yes. Oh, yeah, oh he's doing that again. <laughs> He's okay. supposed to leave his toys at home. Hello, hello. Oh, look at this. We got a computer here. Hello. Hi, I've just landed. Yes. Uh, um, why am I still here? I know, sorry. I've, uh, what, I've what's hard wired in the coordinate program, Bill. It would take me months to get to you. So you just, just you stay there in Connecticut. Sure, sure. Great. Somebody has to do the work, huh? <laughs> we have to keep the Great Western people at arm's length, you see? <laughs> Which is that one? I think 3,000 miles is enough of an arm's length, okay? This is. Uh... Anyway, so, uh, welcome to our first uh, UK Facebook Live event. Hello. Uh, we are actually in the warehouse in Kent, apart from Bill, obviously, who is uh, across the pond. Um, well, I'm now here. Yes, exactly. I wasn't here five uh, minutes ago. Yes, yes, of course. Yes, yeah, sorry. I'm not sure how many people are buying that, but that's okay. Go ahead. <laughs> 
Yeah, just so you're aware, um, Andy's not being rude and um, on phone or you know texting people. Uh, he's actually just monitoring any questions we have coming in, um, so they'll be able to have a little bit of back and forth and answering your questions as they may or may not appear. Please feel free to ask us anything you like. Um, we can't promise to be able to answer your questions, but uh, please feel free to ask us. So why don't we start off with the Hunslet? Why don't you guys show up and we can just maybe bring the sample right up close. To the camera. Yep. So this, if you can see it, is a hand-decorated uh, sample of the Hunslet, which was painted for us by Dave Lowry, expert model maker and painter. Uh, I don't know how well you can see that. But yeah, that's pretty clear. It's come out really, really well. We're really, really impressed with it. Um, we've got a couple of things that we want to tweak to the to the to the EP. Um, but we're hoping to um, to get that. So input. we're fixing a wheel, right? Yes. One of the wheels needs to be fixed. Well, two or, two little issues yeah. with the wheels. Yeah. So the the, the outside tire and the rim um, wasn't quite the right depth and shape to us. It looked like it had been through a, quite a lot of work and uh, it was down to scrapping size. So we're, we're thickening that up. Yeah. Um, you can see and that. we also have just amended one of the balance weights on the centre driving uh, set of wheels because it wasn't quite placed correctly. Right. And they're being corrected uh, as we speak. Yeah, exactly. So is this the first EP that you guys have gotten, Thomas? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. We'll, we'll get uh, we'll get some uh, fresh ones with some fresh wheels, and um, hopefully see where we can get those painted up in some slightly different colours. Um, very, <laughs> very, very promising for a fresh shot. But we'll we'll, do, we'll, we'll um, yeah. Do you want to talk about painted? Yeah. The, the challenge for us, um, people think that Rapido is a huge company. Um, we're not. Well, North America is pretty huge, but the UK company is, 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 is us. it's those two yeah. and the guy on the other picture there. I mean, that's really the three of them run the business. Um, I, I supervise, but I'm not doing the day to day. It's, it's them. Um, so it means that, and also Steve, who's, he's the one who set the zoom up <laughs> a minute ago and he's and, run away. And a couple of contractors who do a few bits and pieces for right, us. Right, right, right. We are really small. We're a small company. So um, the factories that we use are also small factories. And so the, the, the trouble is um, decorated samples take a lot of time away from production because we don't have enough, uh, they're not big enough factories to make fully decorated samples. Most people use um, uh, a couple of big factories, like it's one run by a fellow named Wen Sen, it's one of the largest factories. Uh, Cater, as you know, is a huge factory. They've got more than one factory. And they've, each of those factories, they have entire departments devoted just to decorating samples. Because when you decorate samples, you've got to make painting masks, you've got to make the printing plates, you've got to do, and, and you know, everything's got to go work perfectly. And then if you then make changes to it, you have to make new painting masks, new paint, printing plates. And, and it can take, um, Essentially, for us to do decorated samples takes up our entire printing department, you know, a week. Uh, where we're not making we're not making wagons or, or North American malls, whatever else that will actually bring in money. We're busy making samples, so um, it, it's very hard. So we often will do is we'll get people like Dave to paint up our samples for us. Bill's painted up samples for North America. Dan has our friend Mark has. We have a number of people who paint up the samples for us, but we're just not big enough to be able to say here's you know. 12 different paint, here's all the liveries, they're beautifully, they're de and this is what they're gonna look like. So we kind of have to hope that um, you guys will have faith in us to order the, the off the artworks, the, the livery that you want, knowing that the end, end model will look like the artwork. And if you find a mistake in the artwork, please contact us. Don't yes. wait until yeah. it comes out yeah. to say you got it wrong. Yeah. Say, contact and say, I think you've got a mistake in your artwork. Because we might have spotted it, but we might not. And it's right. better to be safe than sorry with this. And, you know, like, on the sample thing, to put this in some perspective, the, the Sterling single that we did had 70 some tampo hits on it. It takes roughly an hour to change from one tampo hit to the next. So that's just 70 hours of changing plates before we could get to the sample. And unfortunately, that's what makes it so difficult to for us to do you know one-off decoration samples. One of, the, one of the things I would say there as well is, is have a look at our past products. Have a look at not only the UK stuff, because a lot of that was really finely done. Mm -hmm. You know, a good example behind me, um, one of the dynamometer cars. And I think, again, lots of people will, uh, will testify to the fact that they were absolutely beautiful as models. Um, but have a look at some of the North American stuff. Go on the Rapido Trains Inc. website. Um, some of the diesels, some of the, the work that the guys over there are doing is just fantastic. And that same support is available to the UK stuff and we're using the same factories at the end of the day. So have a look at what they're producing and sort of 
have a bit of faith in what we're doing, but you know, the, the, the proof is out there to see. It might just not be a colour red and a colour blue yeah. on a Hunslet. It yeah. might be all sorts of shades of funny colours on some weird Via Diesel or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so the, the, the reason we're, we're giving you this little sort of spiel is because the order deadline is, I believe, December 2nd, 3rd, December 3rd for the Hunslets. So um, we're not going to make much in the way of stock. So please get your orders in by then. Um, we will show videos um, as with our net. We want to wait for our next sample before we show it hauling wagons and stuff like that. Um, so we will, because this sample is hand assembled and we can show it to you, but it's going to be really wobbly. It's, it's, it's one of those wobble engines wobbling down yeah, the track. Yeah. So we want to get one that's got that we can use the machine press to put it, put the wheel sets together and things like that. So that um, uh, you can you can see that and have confidence it's going to hold a good number of yeah. wagons. Very much. Right. I was going to make a gag about your driving when you're talking about wobbling, but I won't do that. So. <laughs> oh, it's terrible. <laughs> there is there is behind Jason as well another of the Hunslet samples that shows the uh, the different style of chimney. Um, there is also lubricators, no lubricators on the side. Um, the lubricators on the real thing lubricated the axle boxes and stuff there you like. Go. I don't know where they can see um, that. But. And then there's some really tiny details, including. Um, sandbox filler caps came in two types um, and axle guards so there are there are some details that are almost less than a millimeter I, I, that we've included I, and i like i like the coal load i think that's really good that was a really inspired idea so. yeah so uh, one thing that really bothers me and i don't know about uh, other model makers but i hate it when coal loads are like this as someone who drives steam engines they never are like this unless you are out on an engine piling the very last bit up just before you come off the depot the first thing that happens is the farmer shovels the coal out the hole in the middle and it collapses down in the center so it should be a, a nice gently inverted shape and um, actually on the paint it's off it shows really well we put that into the hunslet i don't know it's whether you'll be able to see this, shape. We, can, we can try um, so it actually looks like they haven't uh, put the coal texture on yet have they yeah yeah they yeah. have on there as well there you go, there it's go. a really yeah. nice job it's, really, yeah. it's just perfect so are there photos of these are there photos of these on the website or on the Facebook pages yet? Uh, there are photos of the samples on uh, the Facebook page. They've been in all of our newsletters. It's worth signing up if you haven't. Um, right. There will be some on the website as soon as I can find five minutes to sit down and do it. Excellent. So Excellent. the one thing uh, that I um, was asked to bring uh, to show you, um, and I know exactly where it is, it's in a box in my spare room, which I didn't bring. Uh, was the 3D printed sample of the 15XX. <laughs> I don't know. No Western stuff. <laughs> uh, so uh, so we'd, we'd, we'd like to have uh, uh, brought that to you, but the good news is that is now, um, Tooling has now started. It's just a pannier tank with valve gear, that's all it is. <laughs> so, so yes, Tooling has now started on that, so, um, so that's good, so I hope it won't reminded be myself that the last thing I had to do was forget the sample, so I, the last thing I did was forget the sample. Perfect, exactly. okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. This is a live stream, so people can see it on their screens. We've had shows in North America where, um, you know, they were supposed to send it to us via truck, and he sent it by rail, and the samples arrived the day after the show. Ended, <laughs> and we had an empty table. shows where the entire booth didn't show up. So, you know, just <laughs> once. <laughs> exactly. Um, so what else? What else have we got here? Um, um, so let's just look. The, the early sample of the AP-T, I thought I'd bring the computer over to the table. Yeah. Um, do you want to start? That? So this is, we want to show you that um, that over there is a power car from the first run. Um, these are all the test samples. You can see they've got, you know, pieces of tape on them and stuff like that. But it was just a function test, basically, make sure it worked properly. And one of the things that we did was we, um, we, we made a super long train with original carriages and the new train to make sure they're fully compatible. So they are fully compatible. This is actually going to be loud in the basement, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we were just seeing, working out what decimal level of Jason is. Do you know how loud the APT is? <laughs> For such an impressive train, it does have a bit of a dingy horn, though. <laughs> I think it's great. And now I've listened to it. Oh, there it goes. Whoa. <laughs> All right, come on. It can go faster than that. It's not going to break the speed record on that speed. If we can't see it, we'll do the camera. Can you see it, though? There we go. We're only showing the front half of the layer. What's that? What's the half of it? 
Take the train, lift it up a bit more. There we go. Fabulous. I have to say that the uh, the run is not that exciting. It's going in circles. <laughs> well, that's pretty good. Right. You're going to have to kill the sound or we're not going to be able to hear ourselves. There what? We go. <laughs> Excellent. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This is nice. And it does tilt. Yes, it does. Can we look at these wagons now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sit down, put the screen back. Oh, fine, yeah. yeah. Which is a little, okay. No. It could, could, be, could, be, worse. could be worse if we sat here stroking a bus. So, <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> so you have a hand decorated. That, that was live, you know that, right? <laughs> yeah. You've not seen the video then? <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is a hand decorated sample of the seven plank uh, Chatham wagon. I don't, don't ask me what diagram it is, but. <laughs> Looks very, very smart. Detail in there. Underframe, if you can see that. It's got all of the underframe detail yeah. for when you have your uh, Southeast and Chatham style derailments. <laughs> nice. <laughs> a fantastic picture in one of the uh, Mike King's books of a, a Southeast and Chatham derailment with a brake van and um, various other vans, and they're all up, some of them are upside down. So uh, This shows the detail uh, better. Look at see. that. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? So I think in the, the seven point mm, wagon. Stunning. When you've got the end sheet rails on it, which will come as a polybag part, I think there's 41 separate parts in the wagon. Um, wow. Cross bearings in it, there's stamped metal um, door bangs where the drawers are. It's door got interior down. detail as well. Yeah, all the interior Beauty. details there. The bolt, bolt heads are just about visible. Um, all the bolt heads on this are actually hexagonal. They're all the right shape. They're not just little blobs. If you get a magnifying glass out and look, they are all exactly correct. And the stub also fits, uh, just comes through the bolts as well. So there's just uh, this lovely little bit of detail. It is an absolute work of art. And designed in the UK. All designed in the UK. So uh, we, we've had a, a couple of UK cab designers do these and they're working on um, some more projects we haven't announced and a few projects that have been announced. Um, and they're, they're a really good uh, asset to the team actually. Mm. It gives, let us get on with some more unusual things a fair bit quicker. They're in production now. So, oh, oh look, at, look at this really fine etch. Isn't that gorgeous. That's fabulous. Look at that. Fine edge there on the bottom there. Great. Okay. Just fabulous stuff. What is that? Sorry, I was looking at the question. So, what is that? So Those are the, the door stops on the door. The two outside bits, um, it's, it's slid down ever so slightly there. Oh, the two that drops down are the door bang. So, the center door, when it would have dropped down, oh, okay, had okay. a spring and didn't hit the brake gear. And the outer two are stanchions that went onto the body work. Oh, they're cool. all there folded up. They're all the right shape, just cool. about the right thickness there. Um, they're absolutely stunning. Um, Brilliant. Oh, yeah. They're beautiful. They're just the wrong railway. That's so, all. So. They were found all over the country. So um, there's a picture of one of the five plants near Inverness. They regularly worked onto the western regions. So that they should even keep you happy. Um, there's pictures of them in all sorts of weird, and wonderful places. And they had a really long life. So they were they were just about at the end of uh, the southeastern Chatham Railway um, sort of part of life. They lasted all the way through Southern Days, all the way through uh, into British Rail. Um, quite a number survived in revenue stock, they end up in departmental service, and then they even end up at the Port of Bristol um, uh, on, the, on the system down there, which is where the surviving Bluebell ones and ones of the West Somerset and other places. How late was that? Into the, into the 70s. In the 80s? Yeah, there is, there's a photo of one, I think, in departmental red, which I think is the one we're doing in the range, that was a Gil, picture at Guildford in either 69 or 70, still in, in S&T use. So you've got wagons with a huge long lifespan. When were they built? 19, my brain's all completely dead now, 1910, somewhere around there. Wow. So they had a really long lifespan, mm -hmm. so you haven't got an excuse if you model southeastern Chatham, the southern British Rail, southern region, or uh, pretty much any of the other bits of regions where they went off to. The one that got into Scotland was in British Rail Grey, so you haven't got an excuse to have one. They're worth, uh, worth ordering through us, through one of the retailers, whatever you want to do, put your order in. We've done the PO now, so there's now a finite amount being produced. When they're off, when they're gone on the website, they're gone. And some of them are into only into just into double figures or uh, very close to single figures. So uh, yeah, don't delay. Order them if you want them. Good sales speech. Good pitch. You should sell cars or something. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, so. he is sort of. But, uh, it's, uh, he's selling cars. <laughs> like by American terminology, we certainly have. That's right. Wagons there, cars here. 
So I have to say that the video that you did of this thing blowing up <laughs> was a work of genius. Like that was awesome. It's your idea, but, but you know, we uh, we made it happen. You made it happen. <laughs> but, but, right. Just, just, I just want to interrupt you, Frank. We just had a really odd question from some really weird bloke with a surname something to do with Bond, I think, saying we got a plan to do an OOG GP40 TC from <laughs> Mr. J Fleming. Um, <laughs> do you want to deal with that one, Jason? Um, P45. I can block that user. You can do that on the phone. And, just... So, by the way, J Fleming is the person who did that video. <laughs> He's the end of the video for us. It's Jeremy, our video guru. But um, in all the North American videos, there's a bunch of Amtrak nerds who love this X Go Transit engine from Go Transit from Toronto that Amtrak then bought. And they all want us to make it. And there was like 10 of them or something. And they're going nuts about it. I'm sure we'll sell like to those eight guys and then they'll buy one of each and then we'll have to sell another 3,000 to make a profit. <laughs> I think some of them might buy two or three. Right, when I the live now, you're all asleep when we do the live stream. <laughs> yeah, that is very true. I watched one once and it did send me to sleep. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's awful. Uh, I'm leaving. Anyway, what's like about that? Now you're on the other side. <laughs> uh, so here we are. We have gunpowder vans, um, which actually, having taken this project over from from um, from Bill, I think you probably started it. Or um, yeah. yeah. In 1997. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's come on. <laughs> but, but actually, they're, they're really, really nice. I was really impressed when when the uh, the box arrived from China, uh, opened it up, and these little wagons came out, and they're they're, they're really nice, really nice. Um, so there's some kind of surprising features. You've got die cast, um, um, what you call them? Double lines. That's it. Yeah, axle boxes. And tie bars here again, lots of nice. Get, get that close, you can see it close up. Nice, yeah, nice yeah. underframe detail uh, under there as well. Um, I mean, I was sat here just spinning. They're really, really free rolling. Wow, that's great. Still going, um, and obviously, you know, turn brass buffer heads, and obviously all the different different versions. Wheels um, for UK stock cost so much more than wheels <laughs> for North American stock. Oh, and there's there's what two styles of wheels on these? Yeah, right? so there's there's. Um, hang on, let me get this. This is the um, RCH and uh, BR, LNER, LMS versions. Obviously, you know, as we explained in the newsletter, there have been a few compromises. Can't get over that because of, because of just how many, how many little tweaks there are, but are still a very nice little wagon. This is the Great Western one. Um, as you can see, there's a bit of extra roof overhang. Uh, these details here are different, different um, warning Different panel. side door posts. Yeah. yeah. Different end stanchions with, with um, rivets on, but again, uh, um, yeah, everything's coming out. Really three cool. different buffers, I think, if I remember. Yes, yeah, different wheels. Um, obviously, the, the tie bars are, are optional, um, with or without um, back brakes. So, um, yeah, as many many detailed differences that we can get into a model of, of this size. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really really pleased with how well these have come out. They're gorgeous. Now, it's worth mentioning. James has asked the question, how do I order them in Canada? Well, the really easy answer is speak to Rapido Trains Inc. in, uh, in Canada, drop them an email. If you tell them the, the version, the part number, what you want, they you just will give the SKU and give the SKU number, um, which we found on our website. They will uh, take your order. Basically, they're acting as agents for um, all of our products, and they'll take all the orders for, say, the gunpowder vans. When they're ready, we'll ship them off to there. They will invoice you, take your payment, all those bits and pieces, and ship them out to you, which means you're not paying all the post to get it across the water. So it's a benefit for you guys, um, and likewise for anyone who's listening to this who is interested in North American products, um, anything that's got an open order book, i.e. stuff that's currently um, in production, um, likewise you can do the same with us. You can actually order it directly on our website, click of a button, and then when it's all uh, all here, um, we will invoice you and everything will be shipped to us directly. So it works both ways around. So if you're looking for British stuff in North America, speak to Jason. If you're looking for a North American stuff speak in the UK, <laughs> no, no, speak to me. But come back, come back. I don't speak to him. It's really, really a lot. Times of night, you know, three o'clock in the morning would be perfect. <laughs> Can I just mention that I'm wearing Tom Baker's face on my t-shirt? I just thought I'd share that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, yeah, Jason's I'm... fashion tips for the day. <laughs> the tumbleweed is flying. Well, it out. actually looks like his, 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 whatever his name is, is running to Jason at speed. I have imported water, imported from Quebec. Look at that. This is very, this is really expensive water. <laughs> but it went into my, into my bag on the plane and it's still here. <laughs> Um, you, have, you have six boxes of decaf tea down there to get through as well. <laughs> Cheers.
So have, have you had any questions? Well, we've, we've, we've had a few questions. Thanks. Um, one of them was, um, which was on our other post uh, a couple of days ago, which I thought was quite a good question, which might be for Jason. Um, would you rather fight a hundred small ducks or one large duck? Um, <laughs> I, I would definitely like to fight um, one large duck as yeah. opposed to a hundred small ducks. You ones. can be surrounded by a hundred small ducks. Yeah, there's no way to get out. Large. You We're have to one, Richard off. <laughs> one large duck, oh, definitely. Don't, don't now, of course, off. actually, there's a segue here into what we're going to do is surround you with pannier tanks. So you can either fight off one large duck or <laughs> lots of small ones. Um, there we go. I'm going to run away from that one now. Let's have a serious question. <laughs> <laughs> um, Conflat com peas in four millimeter scale rather than two mil. We've obviously done them teeny, teeny, tiny. There's been lots of people asking, should we do them slightly less teeny, teeny, uh, tiny? What do you think? The, uh, I, you know, wasn't it the twenty eighth name that hold them? So that well, would mean, uh, uh, no, ish. well, sort of, yes, a little ish. bit. They ran at the very beginning with them, and then when they found that the windows fell out and everything else on twenty eighth, <laughs> they repaired them and then sent them elsewhere. They sent them to Cumbria, sort of just getting rid of them somewhere. Where so we would have to do. A, we'd have to do. I mean. Class twenty eight with the with the curved windows in double O, uh, but then I mean then then you really ran on Condor and once they Condor finished they were pensioned off and they turned into timber peas. Yeah. So we're it's, doing an engage. That's very yeah, cool. because, but people want them for the twenty eight and then engage. Yeah, right? but there's so. a twenty eight available in double O. So yeah, really yeah, 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 but it's not as good. Did I say that loud? It's not as good as our twenty eight. All right, and then and then the follow up question is that. Send your me. complaints too. <laughs> Uh, a few people have also asked, you know, you've done the Conflats, any chance of doing the Timber P variant? They shared the same chassis, but actually a lot of stuff above it was very different. And looking at the way we've made it, it all, I suppose, it's not, it, it's it, not as quick and easy as some people It all comes down to, um, to, to finding drawings. I mean, the, the, the Conflat P was, huh? was, was, there was so little to work with. That I mean, was it's, very it's difficult. Little, I mean, that was a challenge. Bill, so. Bill basically drew it from two or three pictures <laughs> and. Phil drew it from memory. Yes, work. It's, it's are with I made it up as I went along. Educated <laughs> guesswork and a handful of outline drawings, and, and you know, I mean, fair play to Bill. You did a cracking job. So um, good work, Bill. Yeah. yeah, that took him like an hour. I told you for You have to see how how the sales are. Like, if I look at in North America as an example. Um, I don't, we know, we no one has the exact numbers, but I imagine the double O N gauge here is very similar to the H O N scale breakdown in North America. And you give an example of uh, an N scale freight car where we'll sell, you know, four or 5,000. And then the H O scale freight car will sell two or three times as many. And the problem is the tooling cost is very similar between you know four molds or five molds is the same cost whether it's four mold this big or four mold this big because it's so detailed it's all that cutting time and likewise the assembly time is very similar at the time the right time right right so so i mean we pay a little bit less for our end gauge but actually the end scale models we make a smaller margin on them because you can't charge $55 Canadian or US, I mean, for an end scale freight car, whereas you can charge 55 or 60 for an HO scale freight car, even though the, our cost is very similar. So I think it comes down to when asking the question, will this do, will we do X or Y or Z in end gauge? It really depends on the sales. So let's see how the Conflat P does. If the Conflat P only sells say 2000 pieces, then we know, all right, I think that it's difficult to make any money on these these rare end gauge wagons and we have to go with much more you know popular stuff people i know in north america the end scale modelers like to build unit trains they want to have a, a big long train of the same hopper car so maybe if the conflat p doesn't do so well our next end gauge wagon is going to be something that you can make a big long 20 piece uh unit train you know hauled behind your 66. exactly right yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and and to your comment too andy on the, the the timber wagon you're absolutely correct that it, sh it shares nothing except the wheels to be perfectly honest because of the way the model is constructed so it would be an all new pro all new project despite the fact that the prototype shared so much this is something you see a lot of and i've seen with other manufacturers and ourselves people saying oh you know the real thing is very similar to this but it, it's it might have been in real life because the body and the sole bars were detachable and, and whatever but the way we've got to make a model is very different and actually we might end up redesigning 90% of the model to get somewhere similar. And 
you know, there are other projects that we're talking about where uh, I'm sure we'll talk about the E1 in a little bit, but a few people have emailed us, what about an E1R? It's effectively it's, the same it's, boiler, it's, it's the same it's, tanks, just the cab and the underframe's different. But actually that it's is an all, it's an all new model. pretty much a whole <laughs> new model at that point <laughs> to produce something that was relatively small in numbers or, or, or whatever else. Now that doesn't mean it can't be done, it comes down to then the finances, does the financial option of all of this extra work against the offset of the amount of payment we're getting, does it give us um, a, a profit margin that is, that is acceptable? And, and we look at every product like this. Before we start a product, we, we try and work out using our figures and our brains, you know, how many uh, units we're gonna sell, the, the rough price of them, and that gives us a, a percentage and it's either within a tolerance for us or it's not. And it is sometimes very, it's as binary as that, is it yes yeah, or no? Yeah. And some things are very close, and that's where sometimes people are willing to take a risk, sometimes people aren't. We'll see yeah. case, case by case yeah. um, where that goes, but you know, it's mosquito. we yeah. have to look at things very carefully. And whilst a number of you have said along the way, you know, oh, Rapido, you're an interesting company, you all do the weird stuff that takes risks. We can't take, <laughs> we can't take too many risks, I was just joining in for that. Um, we can't take too many risks, because obviously that might mean that the next project is then, uh, is in jeopardy or put off. Um, the biggest problem in, in model making in the business side is cash flow. If anyone hasn't read it, go and find our old newsletters on the website and read Jason's article on cash flow, because that is that will open people's eyes to actually how running model, model railway business is. As much as we're all cranks and we would all love to produce X, we have to produce X but make a return, or otherwise it's just it's just yeah. not possible to do it. And we've had to argue everything. There's so many people have said Titfield was a no-brainer, but I had to argue with Jason to say, here's the maths to make it profitable by the time you've taken it into account. All sorts of weird things like the claiming the drawings, license fees, all of that stuff. We have to every project do the same thing to say, can we do it or not? It's, it's as much as I'd love to just go, let's make this. We have to. Oh, it's it feels an enormous do. investment. Yes, huge. And um, and I give an idea. One of the things that's a real challenge is steam locomotives tend to cost a lot more than diesel locomotives for tooling. Um, to give you a comparison, the entire APTE costs less to tool than the fifteen XX. So and all those wiggly bits. Yeah, and you think about the fact <laughs> they're that they're so lovely. You know, <laughs> our sales of the APTE, if you combine the first run and the second run, is probably almost double that of the 15XX. But the 15XX has cost more to tool, so our, our margins on the 15XX are much much lower. So it's a real challenge. I, I, I find we often have arguments where you guys will have all these steam engines you want to do. I say like. Can we do another 28? Like, like, you know, the 28 is actually a much more affordable model from a tooling perspective. Our unit cost is still high, yes. but the, the and decoration cost, but the actual number of bits involved is fewer. Yep. Um, so that's a challenge. And so the, and the trouble that, that Rapido UK has right now, the Rapido UK has to obviously, is being financed by Rapido Canada to build this company. Um, and we, we, we are not yet at a point where we're delivering products regularly so that those products then finance the next product. And the same thing with Pedo Canada. I mean, it, it, we, it took us a few years before we were able to turn a profit and be able to, to I mean, luckily we didn't have, or unfortunately we didn't have Rapido Canada like we did, like you, Rapido yeah. UK has a very firm base to stand on because Canada is a big company and is well established and lots of resources. But when I started, I had like buckets. Buckets <laughs> is the, the technical term is buckets. Okay. And, and it was a very, it was a challenge to, to bring out models. And for the first several years, we brought out, you know, one or two models a year. We just couldn't afford yeah. to bring out more. We've got an unbelievable amount of projects that are well on the way to being ready to go for tooling, but we at the moment are in a No, they're, where they're, but, they're, but if you look at the fact, we've got, I think, five or six products in tooling we that we haven't announced. Yeah, 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 but we've got more yeah. beyond that. We, yeah. We've got enough projects to see us through four or five years, but it's, it is very much that we need to get some of these moving forward. Yeah. Is, read the article on cash flow. Genuinely, it was one of the best things I've read in the Modern Railway Press, uh, well, I saw a newsletter for a while. It was an eye opener. I know a lot of people I know, including some people in the industry, read it and found it quite an enlightening way of putting things. So do go and have a read of it later on. Thank it will, you very much. Another really really excellent good. sales pitch. Well yeah. done. And can I add to that that I'm wearing bell bottom trousers? Oh, goodness. <laughs> Um, while we're on the subject, you know, if you guys could just move the camera just to look. <laughs> yeah, but you can't switch him off though. He's still in your ear. Now. <laughs> so, uh, while you, we're know, you, it was your idea to start this business. <laughs> you no. called me, remember? No, you. <laughs> said I think Andy has a question. 
Right, <laughs> come on, work for it. Right, I wasn't going to do it. I, I, can tell you, I can tell you a genuine story here. So the first time I met these two kind of in person was when we were doing the 16 Inch Text project. Yeah, we were, we were so doing this. I did a little work with Richard previously for Model Rail, and Richard rang up and said, can you get us access to the real logo? So I got them down, we had a look around the logo, did some measurements, I provided them the drawing and stuff. We went out for a train ride. And after about one trip from Tenton to Bodium, I decided the best thing to do was to put Jason on the footplate so me and Richard could sit quietly and just have a chat on the way back. So we had 35 minutes on the return trip where Jason was up bothering the train crew. It and, was uh, really hot in there. Yeah, he came, he came off complaining about it. Who would have thought, thought anyone else would fight a hand off the footplate rather than me? But, uh, but, but there we go. Yeah, um, who, 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 we, we, we really try not to let him out in public that often. Yeah. <laughs> So going back to a couple more questions then. Um, while we're talking about Titfield, someone's asked how Lion is coming along. Um, Very nice. It's <laughs> roaring along, to be quite honest. We've oh. just done some bits on it. That was better than your jokes. Um, we've just done a bit more work on it uh, today. Um, we've had some help from a couple of outside people um, who are experts in the field, and it is coming along really, really it well. Shouldn't, it shouldn't I mean, be too long before it's, it's, the design is finished. Yeah, so we, I would hope being all well, we'll see it off to the next stage imminently yeah um it's now down to i mean we are looking at really pernickety things proper, now proper rivet counting proper rivet counting and hex hex rivet hex yes. bolts yes. rivets yes. and square headed nuts because again the history of the loco it's so long that it didn't have Whitworth bits on it until later in its life so we are literally going over it going which ones should be square which ones should be this shape how many should there be it's a minefield and it, but it's a really good project so that should be off to the next stage shortly so there'll be some more to share on that and um, very very um, soon the design for the um toad is now done so the toad um, is now all but complete uh, so the files for that will be going off to china shortly and um, the lorry with the little but those are being those have been designed here yeah. so the lorry so it takes about a week for china to finish them up they've yeah. got to tweak things china basically uh, the, the projects we do in the uk we designed them um our team are absolutely brilliant at um at, getting all the tolerances and bits for injection moulding in, but just occasionally factories, it's a bit like when you might do your own model making, everyone has their own way of doing things or, or that work with their machinery. So China come back to us a couple of times, back the ball back to, to change little bits and pieces. We then sign it off and it, it moves forward. So yeah, Dan's house, the lorry and the toad are all ready. And then the OB you're working on at the moment, some credits? Yes, I am. <coughs> um, so it's getting there. And the only um, one that outstanding then is, is, is the... Wizbeach coach. Wizbeach coach, yeah, which... The correct pronunciation. Wizbeach, 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 it's that <laughs> weird part of England with weird yeah, where, where I, that, that one. Yeah, 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 yeah it's a few um, miles down the road for me. So, yeah, that is uh, in the CAD stage now. It's um, it's quite a, a delicate project, that one. It's a very delicate coach. It's a very nice coach and it needs to be done absolutely properly. So that's a little bit later than everything else. Um, but we're not going to rush it. It's going to be right, mm -hmm. and it will all be ready for the film's 70th anniversary in uh, 20, 30, 2033? 20, 2023. 2023. It's time. Yes. It's time. I'm not, yeah, it's, we're it's, not it's paying for that tooling now for a 20, <laughs> 2033 release. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, you Bill, you what have you? What have you been? What's your favorite part of working on UK stuff? Well, like, what's your favorite thing that you've done for the UK? Lord. Um, what would you like to see us make? Oh, I'm already given the list. <laughs> <laughs> and I have obtained the drawings. <laughs> but we can't and, and we can't announce some of those yet. But uh, yeah, there, there are there are some projects I'd like to see that uh, we've talked about that uh, hopefully and, will come to fruition. Do you think can can you guess which region they are, everybody? <laughs> one one of the questions we've been asked though, which might be up Bill Street, in fairness, and we've been asked this question today, and maybe Bill can answer is um, do we fancy doing an S160? Yes. Bill Bill likes American engines. I like Baldwin locomotives. I've got to admit, we've got a, a Baldwin USA tank down at the Kentney Sussex that I regularly drive. Um, what are you reading? Uh, Allied military locomotives of the Second World War. Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. That's, huh. No, it's not. <laughs> That's really boring. It's yes, it is actually. <laughs> yeah, I wrote it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wrote it's about really boring. <laughs> there's there's very cool stuff in there, including um, things with sort of two eight zero wheel arrangements. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. So, um, who knows? Watch this space on that oh, one. We'll, we'll have to think about it a little bit. Let's make that one. A brown bobbery. What the heck? Is that? <laughs> That's a cross between a Great Western. Brown Bavari turbine yeah. locomotive and something that's been smashed into a wall, I think. Yeah, okay, well, that's, um, <laughs> that's, yeah, yeah, that's the type of thing that Jason likes. But anyway, moving on. Liam's asked, uh, Liam's, Liam's just commented very, very factually that Paul McCann is the best doctor from the classics. <laughs> what? 
Um, what? He was in one episode. He was in one episode. And it, but was, it was spectacular. No, <laughs> pants. Terrible. And for all you North American watching, pants is another word for rubbish. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, definitely not. I had John Pertwee, number one. Tom Baker, very good. Yeah. Patrick Troughton. Um, yeah, that's right, mate. Let's go back to the interesting yeah. stuff. So, so uh, talking about the Titfield Buffet car, someone said, is it going to be available in uh, any of the authentic liveries? It will be. That's it. <laughs> yeah, so everything that yeah. is... In- yeah. Yeah, everything that's in the Titfield packs will also be available okay, yeah. in so let's, standard stuff. Yeah, let's yeah. talk Titfield. Um, people want to place their orders, and we look forward to your orders, but we're not going to announce them until we get the final pricing from the factory. We don't want to uh, paint ourselves into a corner yeah. where we announce it and then uh, discover that we're losing money on every box. Or, or our price. Or, or our price, you guys. Yeah. 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 We want it to be, it to be yeah. fair. So, again, we talk about our right. margins. So, we're holding on until we've got the quotes from the factories, but hopefully for the first bit of that, that will be very, very soon. So there'll be um, different bits. Once, once the design work is finished. Yeah, so we're, we're very mm-hmm. early on that. But yeah, but for the um, for the tram car, for example, um, yeah, I um, you will probably see it in uh, in crimson and in brown, um, brown tiki colour, whatever mm-hmm. colour it was. Um, and and well, there will be the variants too. So the, the outside of the tram car was actually identical for the two that were built, seven and eight, but just the interior that changed. So we're going to design it. And, with and a, we'll have a... A preserved style and a preserved um, style one as well yeah. so there'll be uh like the uh, the north norfolk one as it is now with the titfield style bar in it then there'll be the titfield livery one uh there'll also then be the the first third and the, the all third or, yeah. or pure way around it. so there'll be four variants of it but using some smart yeah. tooling that will keep the cost down really? lots of colors and then um, can i just say paul mcgann's a great actor and he did a good job but his the writing for that store was pretty bad okay yeah okay great. i don't want to offend paul mcgann he's a great guy um do we have any renders of some of these that i can share here What's that? Any current renders on any of the Titfield items that I can share share screen on? Uh, there should be in the folders. Um, no, I'm trying Which to think. folders? Um, in, um, in the marketing folders, yeah. probably some. Okay. Right. Before Carry we get on. to screens, can we talk about this? So, I have a story to tell you. That is our uh, Birmingham Guy Arabs. I should say it's Birmingham, which went throughout the whole West Midlands, Guy Arabs. Um, built in 1953 54 and lasted until the late 70s. Um, and uh, here's what happened I, we made a run of these um, a couple of years ago and before the UK company was set up. And uh, it sold out immediately, and people were banging down our doors for more models. So we thought while making these new fleet lines, which are just over mm-hmm. there, um, that we would do another run of the Guy Arabs, right? And we didn't expect them to arrive at the same time, which is what happened. So everyone said, well, I've got the budget for my fleet lines. And they ordered 12 fleet lines. And then they, would, they said, but I don't have the money for the guy Arabs. Yes. So what I'm asking you is to please free up room before the APTs arrive. And please order a bunch of guy please, Arabs please. <laughs> for your layout. In fact, if you look over here, hang on. If you look over here, this is, where, oh, where's, where's Linford set? Uh, somewhere in the southern region. It's a gorgeous model world. And look how beautiful that guy Arab <laughs> looks on the bridge. Can you so, see it there? Yeah, there it's there. the bus on the bridge cliche. Oh, yes. over again. Yes. <laughs> but it's the most detailed bus model ever made. Okay. So please consider ordering guy Arabs. And we'll be very, very happy if you can um, order about 100. And likewise, if you read in the newsletter this great article about cash flow, you'll understand that by buying a gown, Guy Arab, you're actually helping to fund um, whatever that, that project that. might be. Yes. And wartime. Oh, possibly one of those, maybe. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Um, right, another couple of questions, shall we? Are we doing anything that is uh, post-1910? Uh, post 1910? Post-2010, anything modern in uh, 4 mil or in? Um, the trouble, the, I think wagons, probably. Um, the trouble with the modern passenger stuff is two issues. Issue one is EMUs are very expensive because you've got four carriages usually, which are all slightly different. So the cost, unless we were to you know, stick one underbody on and just have, or have no piping and just have blobs, then it's quite easy. And then when you get a four car EMU, um, the cost to make them for each of the four cars is the same, except one of them's got a motor. So there's like a $10 increase on our cost, but the rest of them are super detailed. And you think about the fact that our passenger cars in North America are retailing for like $130 now. 
So that's like 75 pounds. That means that we're going to have to bring out that, that EMU is going to be three times 75, which is 225 plus another 120 or something for the locomotive because we've got the, all the circuit boards for that. So you're looking at in the region of 350, 400 pounds for a four core EMU and people just don't generally have the budget to spend that. That's problem number one. Problem number two, if it's really flashy, like an Azuma or something like that, well then one of the big makers is gonna jump on it and make a train set level model to go roundy roundy, you know, for kids. And people will just say, well, I bought one already. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, ours is, is actually more accurate, more detailed, but I bought one already. Yeah. So that's the challenge with other models. I'd still like to do the D train. That'd be quite cool. That would be cool, actually. D train. Can, can we can we have them catch fire? <laughs> we could do. Too, too <laughs> <tough. But laughs> I'm not going to yeah. say that. Um, another one that's really popular, interestingly, um, you guys have probably seen it, but we've got a suggestion form online, and I did have a little look through that. Um, I was hoping to get a bit more work on it, but I didn't get enough time. But really interestingly, a standout um, item in there statistically was the Wessex unit. Oh, the 442. Really? The 442. Oh. And a lot of that is common. Really? Right. Five car unit with lots of common bits. So actually it sort of fits into where you're going, but you are probably looking at a 400 pound model, 450 pound model. And, and we've got to do like three different interior arrangements for those. Uh, yeah, I think there's the exterior is the same. Right, but it's, you've, it's you've got the compartments in, originally yeah. in the yep. first class. Depends if you do the early ones or the later ones. Right. But, but it's really interesting. But, it, but statistically, it was a real, interestingly, a real anomaly along with um, S160s and um, interestingly quite a lot of earlier steam engines. Um, but yeah, it was quite a high, high polling model. Interesting. So because mm. they're gone, I mean, they yeah, 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 they can spend millions of pounds redoing. <laughs> they redo yeah. and then cut them up. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> it's very interesting because, um, and I would, I would say to everyone that's watching, you know, if you've got time to fill in the, the, the survey bit with an idea or a suggestion, do it because whilst it might not mean your particular diagram of very odd wagon happens, it does give us secondary data. It tells us things like, you know, what era or region are people modelling? And that actually then goes into where we've got our personal ideas and plans and it helps us develop a where should we be going next and joining things up. And it, it, it already has been quite instrumental in some of our choices we've done. Right. Um, there are a couple of unannounced things that, are, that have polled very highly in there, for example, um, from the wagon front that may or may not happen shortly, but it, it puts things in the right place. Mm. So, you know, I think we're almost unique in the manufacturers that we are actively saying to everyone, come and talk to us, get stuff out and get, and we've, we've given you a portal to do it, use it. Use suggestions it. like the 442. And, and, and we desperately need, need more GWR and Western region stuff. So please, <laughs> no, but, get on but, there and sign up and vote early, got, vote off. If you've got a set of works drawings for something, <laughs> um, and you say, well, I've got the, you know, I used to work at, I don't know, uh, such and such a shed, and I've got complete, drawings of this locomotive, this DMU, including underbody and piping and all that stuff. Because yeah. yeah, we, you know, we, 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 we retired the units and I just took them home. If you say that, that, that reduces a huge amount of work for us. So we might That's look at- That's the project really quickly. I mean, and maybe, you know, there is a demand for a super deal class 150 or a super deal something else, right? But if you say, you know, everyone in my club wants their own class 150 and I've got a complete set of drawings of 150s, including all the piping and cabling. I'd say, well, we might look at that now because design wise, we can send those drawings to China and just say go, as opposed to like the Comflat P where we spent months looking for crap until Bill just made it up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I didn't just make it up. Okay. <laughs> That's like making it up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. By making it up, what we mean is that the originals were really from LNER plate wagons, and we did get a drawing for those. Took a little while, we got one. That then went to Bill with a load of photographic references, which meant he could work things out backwards. It's two millimeter scale, so yeah, who does care? He made it in plasticine. He made it in plasticine, and we scanned it. It, it, it was then made accurate enough. So, so d d don't think that you know my two year olds drawn it. It is actually as accurate as you are ever going to get, short of having a time machine. And um, we did. We do have one right over there. Did, we did a huge amount of research on the Conflat P, and some of you will know my background um, in other places. You know, we exhausted just about every every avenue we could find to find a drawing of the real wagon. And I suspect because it was a conversion, actually there would have been very few drawings anyway. It probably would have made up on the spot and the drawings were probably once the lot was done, were cleared off somewhere. So it wouldn't have been copied or reproduced. A lot of drawings that survived today are usually not the work's original copies, but they were copies that were put into store and then kept for other uses elsewhere. So, um, you know, something as unique and odd as that to a degree isn't, isn't always kept. Um, should we have another question? No, I, I just got a message from a Robert A who wants a who heard about a class 150 in the stream and wants a class 150. So we, <laughs> Robert, yeah, will buy one. 
He wants but it Nate That's an, an employee discount too, so that probably <laughs> doesn't count. He wants it Nate Show as well. Yeah. Um, a couple of people have uh, interestingly said, um, does having the actual vehicle help? Well, depending on the vehicle, yes. Drop me an email, um, you go onto the website, there's a contact form on there, drop us an email, we'll pick up on that. But if you've got the actual vehicle for what we're doing, that's always... If it's a bus it's and you let me drive it, that will increase the likelihood of us making it. Ask him about earlier. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Um, so that was that one. Um, oh, I've lost the page. Bear with me a moment. Keep, you, it, <laughs> keep talking about yourselves for a moment. Well, well all right. So, um, yeah. We did actually work very hard on the Calm Flat P. Uh, good work of damage control there, Andy. He's, he's having I'm to very good at control the damage. Eat it up, you know? I... <laughs> but anyway, we can talk about the feet lines. So uh, again, a, a Mr. J Fleming has asked, if hydrogen is extremely flammable and fire needs oxygen to put it out, how does water put out fires? The best response to this is uh, from one of our own contractors who responded with a hose. <laughs> Right. So, um, very, very, very happy with this. It's a West Midlands fleet line. These are um, almost sold out. Some of the, uh, how many are sold out? Uh, about six lines have sold out now. Six so lines have sold out. To a single box of six left. So. Right. So, when some of them we have stock. So, if the line that you want is sold out, what I recommend you do is just buy another one and then you can pay somebody to just make new transfers. Just, you know, cover the route number with the route that you want. Right, but uh, they're gorgeous models. Really nice. We've done we've done the two the rebuilt fronts with um, with the uh, the new side indicators, and we've got the originals with the original indicators. So um, very 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 happy with these. They're gorgeous, you know. And of course, they actually came. They were retired, but right before I moved to Birmingham. All right, so I oh. never got to ride one. I, no, I rode metro too. buses, but I didn't ride these. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. Well, they've sold really well. They're really popular. Like I said, don't delay. They'll be gone quick as a flash. Uh, I think the all the fleet lines there. will be gone by Christmas, most yeah, likely. I, the Arabs, um, buy them. Well, just please. Just buy, buy them, them. please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, Richard has to make another video. <laughs> that was a really good video. Thank you. Yeah, well, <laughs> it was very cute. Um, we have also been asked, um, any updates on the E1? Richard, that's your special. Uh, well, um, we just... <laughs> it's your project. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I must admit, I do feel most guilty about having announced the thing and then um, commissioning, when pre previously the model, rather than commissioning a load of diesel shunters and bits and pieces. So consequently, the one kind of um, fell down. So I, I, I'm really keen to make this happen. Um, basically, until we get the, uh, the, the form closed on the 6th of December, I think that's when we said. Yeah, um, I can't remember if we gave a date on it. And then, and then we'll, um, and then we'll just assess the results. I mean, the, the there's a trouble though. What's that? Is that now? So as of now, the results are pretty split evenly amongst all the variations. It, it's <laughs> it's very, it is very interesting. So um, we have had um, a lot of replies, more than I expected, um, but keep getting people to put them in. Um, the long and the short of it is that uh, yes, there seems to be a healthy market for people wanting. All of the variations, yeah. which is the problem, because um, it just isn't. They, they, no, developed. I mean the, the um, uh, Andy raised the point because Andy's in charge of the website and put together all the form and everything, um, and said that people said, "Oh, there's no uh, LBSCR black," and the reason there was no LBSCR black was when I compiled the list, I had automatically written off the kind of late LBSCR uh, Marsh version, I think, from memory. Forgive me if, if I've got that wrong. Um, the sort of intermediate boiler with, with the dome and the, the um, safety valves were in a completely different place and I'd just I'd written that off that we weren't doing that one because that was just a, another um, step too far. However, we've, we've kind of included that because it's good to get that feedback and we will we'll kind of just see what is feasible at the end of the day. Um, you know, yes, we can, we can do all these versions, we can do an E1R, but it comes down to cost. You know, every single change you make pushes the cost up. You could be looking at a, a, a small tank, like a you know same kind of size as as, as this, two hundred pounds. You know, are people willing to pay that sort of money for for a loco this size? It's also perceived value. Um, in these, North America, we're paying about four hundred pounds. Yeah, <laughs> and, and this is the thing. Europe, Europe, uh, Europe is the same. Um, we are very. We have a, in the UK. We have a very fixed version of price, and that isn't actually. Um, the same as the rest of the world, yet the same as the rest of the world are still paying the same for the, the materials and the research and everything else. Um, a lot of people here 
you see it when, when any of the manufacturers announce something say, you know, straight away, that's too expensive and it must be a greedy manufacturer. Whereas if you do actually see the finances and you it, see how tight these margins are, it, it's not true. And I think we've been very lucky in the UK that we had such a big hobby market. There was an awful lot of, of choice um, the pe and, and relatively low prices. People could buy lots of everything. Yeah, whereas and, now it's and moving towards and, buying and, and, and better, and the, less. The, the, the mentality was obviously, you know, the, the switch from, from um, particularly people like Hornby, you know, switching from UK manufacturing to, to, to Hong Kong. The prices at the time were very low. They were very, very, very good models coming out at very, very good prices. Obviously, you know the costs in China have just have just shot up, and you know, <clears> rightly, we're hopefully now paying people there a fairer wage. You know, they're, they're, you, you see the images. Oh, it was all, in, in Chinese factories, they're always paid a fair wage, but especially in the last, the, we've been making now Rapido for seven, sixteen, seventeen years, and. Um, model train manufacturer workers skilled labor absolutely yeah. so they're making good pay yeah, yeah and i remember i posted a video from china and and it was one of the things where youtube started recommending it especially the people who hated offshore manufacturing yeah, right yeah. so there was a lot of negative commentary and a lot of it i would just zap and then one of them was i, I let it through oh my god slave labor i'll never buy a model train again yeah. And then somebody responded, um, slave girl has a more expensive cell phone than I do, <laughs> yes. right? Because the, the, the equivalent of what they're making in China is about, it's about 30,000 pounds or $50,000 a year sitting there making model trains. Now it's more like $10,000 in Canadian money, yeah. but that buys you what fifty thousand dollars would in Canada? When you look at the GDP of the country and everything. Yeah. Right, right, right. It's 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 I always problems. describe it as cost of lunch. Yes. So in Canada right now, if you were to buy lunch, it's about fifteen dollars. If you want it, and that's we're not talking fancy lunch. We're talking, but we're not talking the cheapest junk. Just average, go out for quick lunch, fifteen dollars. And so Pete, the minimum wage in, across most of Canada is around fifteen dollars. Right. Um, obviously, the cost of living in Toronto and how cost of living in you know but much Newfoundland is very different. But yeah. however, um, the the it's based on the cost of lunch. And in China right now, the cost of a good lunch is about three, four dollars. So you, they're paid about three, four dollars an hour, right? But when Rapido started, the cost of lunch was about 80 cents, yeah. 70 cents. And, 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 that's, and that's, that's, the that's the problem. We seem to have stuck with this mentality, the, 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 the price. So, um, so, so our, yeah, our cost, give an example of an, on a passenger car, um, our costs have gone up by a factor of five. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and our prices have doubled. They have not gone up by a factor of five. So our margin when we first started was like this, and it's just just done this, and away, this, and this, and this. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very, very much. Um, oh. Do you know? And this, we look like we're like related. No, seriously, just look at this. We're not getting too close because you know it's COVID. Yeah. Right? We look like we're like brothers. Thanks. Seriously, I don't need to feel more sorry. For no, it's, it's a compliment for one or an insult for the other. No, sure he's which right, one. right. You fly over there, you take over, you start insulting them, you hit them. No, I mean, he's been hitting me. <laughs> I've been insulting me. I've got, I've got I HR field really, day I've tomorrow. I've had to ride in the. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I've never heard Richard scream as like handbrake. What? What? Oh, <laughs> right, I'm rolling back into another car. Meanwhile, what? more questions, please. <laughs> we, we, we have been asked uh, a question about would we would we consider some uh, four millimeter scale sci-fi characters? This is much more in Jason's area of interest here. Um, Jason would love it. I mean, I, I, you talk that, about weird oh, sci-fi things, though. I did laser scan Jason earlier for the fun of it, and you can't really see it, but if, if there's anything <laughs> there's worse, six if there's anything worse than one Jason in the room, it's six of them. But this lot are quieter, so it is a, a little bit of a bonus there. <laughs> but we actually managed to turn. So they're, they're going back to Canada, so I'm going to expect they're to see HO them. They're HO scale. They are HO. But I expect to see these plastered all over the Kingston sub. I hope at some point <laughs> in the future. But um, <laughs> sci-fi characters. Is yeah, it, is it, is it, is it, a wider question. Would we consider doing things away from rolling stock for the UK market? There's, a, there's I, a, an interesting question. I, 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 would, I, would, I would love to, to be honest. Other than buses. Of I'd have to, it all depends on how much the BBC wants in licensing, <laughs> I yeah. think is what it comes even, down to. You know, would we consider looking at um, you know, other road vehicles away from buses? Would we look at uh, period cars? I mean, we've started doing that in, in North America. Yeah. Uh, the bit. Would we possibly look Might, at I mean, buildings? Some, there are know, a couple of low hanging bus fruits, though. Yeah. Like, there are bus really. Fr are. Bus fruits, is that yeah, like yeah. the name for the people bus that chase after? It's not, <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not, then you're a complaint, too. <laughs> I can tell you. 
but there, there are. There are actually two buses that are almost ready for tooling that we haven't announced. No, that's true. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, so I've been... Um, and Richard's been getting, the one doing getting, them. Getting quite interested, I <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's been a... It's been a uh, Richard's Rich is leading, leading the charge on those mm-hmm. buses. Yep. And I wasn't here for the scanning because I couldn't no, come to no, the UK. Yeah. COVID. Yeah, we had a great no, day. No, a really, really yeah. good day. Um, oh, I mean, other, other vehicles. I, well, I mean, per, personally, I, you know, if we could do Ford Escort. Ford Escort. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you know what? I was actually going to do something very sensible and, and kind of, but you know, Morris <laughs> Marina. <laughs> Is it, but I mean, a lot of stuff's been done. That's the problem. They've but it been... hasn't, it hasn't. There's been some stuff that has been done. I mean, you look at some of the, again, <clears> some <throat> of the bus ranges. Some stuff has been done in a very mediocre oh, way. So now, now people are building. We've got these beautifully fine scale locos and rolling stock, but the rest of people's layouts aren't keeping up in that way. So is there a market for more modern cars, for example? Because there's not very many good quality. Again, it, it, it's, it's paying license fees and it's, stuff. Yeah, it's know, exactly that. It's just does the maths work out? But is there also a market for it? Do people want it? If you're listening and you're interested, for the I know that, you that, that like uh, we're in the process of getting a Ford license, and it's uh, mm-hmm. it well, the North American company mm-hmm. is, mm-hmm. Um, and it's 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 a very steep minimums mm-hmm. that we have to pay yeah. uh, every quarter right. in royalties, yeah. and in order to to make those minimums, we have to sell something like. 20,000 cars, yeah. right? And the question, are we going to sell 20,000 cars, right? So that's a real challenge, you know, unless you've got, unless you've got, you know, Vauxhall UK is the owner is a modeler and he's a fan of ours and says, yeah, you can use our license. You can pay a royalty of, you know, 1% or whatever, no problem, right? But if they come and they want a higher royalty, and it's only it's only it's only the percentage royalty. It's the minimum payments. Yes. Always yes. Yeah, exactly. The royalty is fine because it's based on what you sell. So the more you sell, you can pay the royalties to some extent. But the it's it's the minimum guaranteed payment that you're out that before you sell piece one, and then it's right. That's why people always often ask us if we'd ever do that Silver Streak. Silver Streak was a film in, uh, in the United States that was filmed in Canada using Canadian Pacific equipment. And so a lot of people, we've done the Canadian Pacific equipment in HO scale and they wanted to do the same. And so we contacted them and there was like the, the, the upfront royalty payment was $50,000. And we said, we're going to, our total sales is going to be $50,000. We can't give you a hundred percent royalty, but they wouldn't talk to us. So we couldn't do it. Yeah. Most of the people have custom painted it, but we couldn't do it as a regular release. So something, um, that I'd really like to investigate. I mean, well, we talked about aeroplanes as well, which would be quite cool, you know, die cast planes with moving ailerons and lights and stuff. But Concord, full 176 scale. Vulcan. Sound. Yeah. Yes. Same, well, sound like that. Just use that. Computer. <laughs> just use the APT um, sound effect. I love, I love Concord. Mm. It's little, I don't want like riding it too squishy. Just like a nose, just goes yeah, like that. Exactly. Like DCC. We, I had the die cast with the nose that did that. Of course it would. <sighs> Meanwhile, <laughs> well, they'd be, it'd be huge. Well, yeah, one seventy six. This big, this small. <laughs> um, but also, I, I'm really keen to try and get people in. You know, particularly particularly youngsters trying to to grow the hobby, model making, scenic kits, that kind of stuff. Um, because when you see when you see people who aren't into railways but they see great modelling, they go, "Oh yeah, great!" And and I mean, my wife, you know, she does trees and she does buildings and that kind of shit. Your web's awesome with that stuff. Thank you. She's she, making she's making me agador. <laughs> she might make you. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it's it's being able to provide people with with a, an, an affordable way in because some of this stuff, you know, some of the senior stuff is, is again really expensive. So it's it's finding that balance. But, I mean, this is obviously a conversation for, for yeah. Line, the the trouble with that's, that's my stuff. that's my dream anyway. That's, that's yeah. The I trouble with scenic like. stuff and even with structures is that. It, a good half the market are just collectors mm. and they don't care about yeah. trees or building. They just want the logos. Yeah. And APT or mantel piece mm-hmm. or a bus on the bench. Right. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that is, I'd say it's about half our customers. Mm. Yeah. Um, and so as a consequence, and when we do scenic stuff, it just doesn't sell in the same quantities unless you're like woodland scenics yeah. and you're doing like, yeah. or knock and you're doing all that amazing, it, that, that's where your bread and butter, where you've got a massive range of stuff like that. It's hard to get into that. Mm. And we, we tried getting into track once. Mm. Um, that was a disaster. And paint. Paint still didn't happen, I think. The problem with paint. <laughs> Bill's laughing. Paint, the, the, paint, the paint's very good. I use it all the time. I hope Janet's uh, not watching. <laughs> the, paint, the paint happened because um, the owner of the paint company is a modeler. 
So he came to us and said, I want to make paint. And we said, sure. And we got the first batches of paint out and then he sold the company. And then, he, then they sold the company again. So now we're working with like, this guy's had nothing to do with the company now for like three years. And, and we've just had real trouble getting paint out of it. Cause they're normally selling thousands of gallons and we want one gallon, like one gallon of black. Yeah. We want two gallons of a grimy black. We want to right? just like, uh, one question. In half ounce containers. <laughs> One question we have been asked a couple of times. Um, is it rail crew switch machines? Yes. Are you making any more? We've got the switch machines in stock. We've got the machine. The uncouplers are out of uh, stock, but right. we are making more right. uncouplers, okay. yeah. which those work with the KD style couplers, not with the hook and loop. But um, the, uh, the, um, the the switch machines are in stock. Yeah, so, and they work pretty nicely. We've had a fair few people asking, well, can we buy them in the UK? Yeah, and there's no one here, but the discussion to have was maybe about us. Purchasing sometimes. We'll send a bunch. So, so people can you can, you can put them website. beside the arrows. There's um, <laughs> there are a few things on the North American website that are stock items that people like, and I that was a discussion to have. But there you go. Looks like there's a possibility of it. So um, yeah, that was one of my list of things. Things to cool. talk about tomorrow. So that's big sure. But going back to the original question. So uh, the question I asked, the answer is possibly then. So it's not just rolling stock. It could be anything else if we can satisfy Jason. It's going to make enough money. Falcons. We can do 3D, 3D printed these Vulcans. We can do um, the, uh, It's not what Jason's making up, buddy. That's it's the business. It's no, the no, business has to be. We, we've got to be able to, we've got to have a bit of fortune on everything that you see and, and whatever. And, and of course, a lot of people forget in the model making world, you know, we're not just paying to make model trains. We are paying premises, insurance. There's a huge amount of things. If, you know, anyone who's run a business will know there are so many lines of things you need to pay for. And of course, oh, that, these, so this buses, is a story. these are all this paid for what we do. So I started Rapido part-time when I lived in Birmingham in 2003. I incorporated it in 2004 when I was back in Canada. And, uh, and so 2005 sales were $50,000. It was these kits, resin kits. And then 2007, we delivered our first passenger car. In 2007, sales was like $1.2 million, right? And my wife was out with a friend. It was an article about Rapido in a magazine called Profit Magazine. And we were number four in the hot one, hot 50 or hot 100 or whatever, right? Fast guy, and there was a picture of Mall Train, and it was like, it was Jason Tron, Mall Train. Blah, blah. And so her friend says, Well, you're buying coffee. And so I said, Why? I said, well, you're millionaires. And I was like, um, no, uh, you know, even with 1.2 million dollar sales, it's still like this much in debt <laughs> because we've been running at that point for three or four years with no sales or 50,000 or 40,000, whatever, but paying hundreds of thousands of dollars in overhead costs. Yeah. So uh, Rapido didn't turn a profit until I think 2013. Yeah, and this is why people need to buy Diana. <laughs> yes, yes. I mean, Diana. to put it into context, Richard's been working with the company a year today. It is a year I started today, a little bit before yeah. that, and if you think that the first delivery was only last month for yeah. buses, which was actually started as a North American project, you know, the APTs will be here early in the new year. Our first proper UK project, as it were, I mean, even the GPVs to a, to a degree were pre-started, you know, the Chatham wagons will be the first started by us, and that will be the better part of a year and a half into the company and if you think in that time there's been wages and lighting and heating and all the things you need drawings you know and it's not just for the projects that are happening here and now it's for stuff that's happening in two three four years yeah we have to pay for all your crazy vacations holy crow you guys get like you're never working you get five weeks vacation i would like to point out i respond to emails to you lot at two in the morning <laughs> I, I, as i came out of my mouth i realized that you're gonna punch me later um, <laughs> but you, know, you are weeks. you are within range now <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You might not make your plane back. Uh, no, no. They work very hard. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's a two-man show. Mostly. You know, it, it is. It's a it's a, a huge undertaking. And consider we've got nearly a hundred retailers stocking our products now. So if, if all of them take an hour a week, there's a hundred hours a week of work in there for a very small amount of people. So yeah, the business is well. Is, which brings us uh, wonderfully to the fact that we are about to be hiring. So uh, the oh, news oh, will come out. We? Yes, we are. <laughs> That's the meeting we're having tomorrow. Uh, we're we're replacing the aren't you? He had the paper I sent him. He's now discussing it while we've got other people watching. <laughs> yes, hello everybody. Uh, yes, we are going to be hiring, and so if you, especially um, warranty technicians, if you are within in the area of Staplehurst and you love uh, working with your hands on model trains, you have experience, you want to come be a warranty technician for us. Um, we are looking for that. And uh, I think we'll still be looking for other people as well. So um, 
Yeah, definitely. Uh, keep an eye on our newsletter. We'll, we'll, we'll post the jobs. Yeah, certainly. You will, you will definitely hear about all of that. <laughs> yeah. Once we've talked about it. Once we've talked yeah. about it, decide what we're actually doing. Yeah. It's good. It was good. Thing. It was live in a meeting only about two weeks ago that Jason said, I'm going to come to the UK. <laughs> literally. <laughs> literally like that. And he was booking no, it. No, it was two and a half. Long-term planning may or may not be a strong. <laughs> Sorry, make it out. Two and a half weeks ago. <laughs> yeah, it's been good. It's been good. But I have to say, I got the I got the Brit Rail Pass, which is if, if you don't live in the UK, it's really cheap. And Bill and I, you know, we we we'd, we'd go to Scotland and we'd go to you know, Southwest. And we everyone on this pass and it's first class for peanuts. I mean, I'm talking peanuts. I think the three day pass is like two hundred pounds. First class everywhere in the UK. And I went Heathrow to Paddington, Euston to Crew, Crew to Peterborough, Peterborough to here. I, and I. That's the problem with these short trips. I, I want to go to Scotland in the middle, right? I mean, Dan Garcia was here with me once and we had this pass and he had some time to kill. So he went to Edinburgh. <laughs> it just took the train oh, no, Got out. Cool. And, and, and the problem is- and, and got the train back to London. <laughs> well, clearly the problem is you need to bring me on more trips. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I did invite you to this one. I don't. Unfortunately, believe, the timing this was just too short in this one. I believe um, wife said no. <laughs> well, something about all the stuff going on in November and, and two weeks notice. Yeah, something about that. <laughs> Isn't it your birthday in four days time? Yes. Happy birthday. Oh, moving on. Um, <laughs> and, and it's Doctor Who's birthday a week from today. So happy birthday to Doctor Who. 58. Yes, Doctor Who and Bill are the same age. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yeah, I'm 39 well. again. Yeah. Anyway. Are, there, are there any more? Yeah, well, the other question that's coming that says, is Jason calling for more Welsh whiskey? Oh, I love that. I haven't had one for <laughs> I've got one bottle left of Pendera, but it's the Portwood. They go for like 300 pounds now, and I paid $70 for it in Quebec. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, Pendera's a good whiskey. But no, I've been, I've been drinking a lot of Campbelltown malts. So I've been really liking um, Glen Scotia. It's a really nice whiskey. Uh, Springbank. Am I in the same place? Yeah, it's nice stuff. <laughs> well, yeah. Have I nodded off? <laughs> this has gone very off tangent. Doctor Who and World of Whiskey. It's, uh, yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll get used to it eventually. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, no, it's I, good stuff. I certainly think we will. I do love uh, Scotch, yeah, single malt Scotch. So all of you watching from Scotland, uh, you, you make good I, stuff. I, I love everything about whiskey. I love the, the going around distilleries. I love the the way it's described, I love the, the ambience of it. I just hate the stuff. It's just disgusting. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's an shame. acquired taste. I've tried to acquire it. What you do, it. no, 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 this no, is no, not. No. I, first of all, you, you acquire it on Bolveni because it's like nice whiskey, right? I started by putting a little bit of whiskey in a lot of water. And then- No, just, Andy, uh, what, what have you got to read there? This is <laughs> reduced the water, it's like I was 20 something. I reduced the water till it was all no, whiskey. It's, it's, yeah. Oh, come on, no. you dropped your phone. I did, I did. <laughs> Any more questions? No, not the right lot. Any, any, any more questions for anyone? We'll give, give you another minute yeah, while well, Jason talks about yeah. whiskey while I can type a question. Ask, ask anything ah, you want. Ah. What do you interest in the whiskey? Bill, you haven't answered yet what you really want to see from the UK company. I, well, and we, and that's, I'm being a little bit coy, but yes, because there's there are several projects we've talked about that I'm hoping are going to happen, but nothing that we want to say publicly yet. Uh -huh. Okay, um, so, you, so that all the things that you want to make is actually potential of us making it. Yeah. Well, not all of them, but a good number of them, yes. <laughs> we make an Azuma, and it could be as cheap and crappy as the one we wrote today. It was rattling everywhere. The, fin the, 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 the window was, the seal was broken, so they're all foggy. It's just the finishes were the, cheap. I was junk and I've- It I've, made I've, a horrible whiny. It made a whiny, it like, oh, it was driving Richard nuts, right? I mean, he's only got one kid, I've got three, so I just ignore sounds like that. But like, no, it was, it, it was just, it just felt cheap, mm. right? Whereas I thought the Great Western ones were really nice. And, and- Of course, still, you know, it was a uh, I was very, I was very underwhelmed. I mean, last time I rode LNER was, I think, an HST or an, or an IC225, and it was lovely. HSTs especially, mm. right? Except our, our bogey was hunting, so that wasn't that great. But anyway, well, Andy, any any uh, whiskey questions for Jason? Or <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope. Uh, come on, ask me all about a set of quad arts. Well, I like coaches. Same problem as multiple units. So four in a box mm. it gets a bit expensive, but right, right. Uh, that, would, that would be interesting. Yeah. Lots of people asking about, uh, interesting, a few people asking about industrial locomotives. 
Um, you know, mm -hmm. having done the, uh, done the 16 inch, well, consider some others. That is probably yes. I, I, think, I, think, I think, think the answer, answer, considering I'm a complete industrial I nutter. Think, isn't there one that you do in 3D printing? I do lots in 3D printing. There you go. <laughs> we can compete with, uh, with you. We, we already are to a degree. We've, uh, we've, uh, we've, uh, it's a different, different field. But, um, but no, I mean, I, I pass my driving test on a certain industrial and I'd like to see that modelled. Um, I might happen to have drawings and stuff already, so that's... Uh, I think there's a market there. Um, other manufacturers are doing bits, nope. but again, we don't want to flub them Put it in on our suggestion for them. You think you can yeah, I, um, <laughs> funnily enough, I think I might have done, actually, when I tested the form. I think I might be number one at the top. Um, Ooh, I need to get on there first. I need to get in there. The 7mm scale quarry huns, which I is. think what we really need is another class 47. Yeah. 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 No. Okay. Um, lots yeah, every of, variation. Lots yeah. of people asking about peaks and such like in Engage. Big hole in the market there, mm -hmm. maybe. Mm -hmm. Um, that was that interestingly engaged diesels appear quite well in some of the um okay the stuff so like uh, the last engaged yes we will a hundred percent do another engage the 28 is one of our biggest selling models <laughs> it's amazing well, it's actually the littlest selling model but right but it's yeah. selling very well um but that's uh, well they got quite the little the, the conflat's a little smaller but hey, do you yeah. guys have on bonfire day those little black pills that you'd light and that like it would just come out black goo do you remember those bill from from halloween from, uh, only like, only fourth of july only from the south park episode where there's a giant oh, moving on <laughs> uh, what we had is like the cancerous things like snakes well yeah snakes yeah, yeah, that's right yeah. so if we can do that in the 28 and it'll look like it's catching on fire just melting out all the grills and just the goo coming out <laughs> that'll be amazing and his health and safety <laughs> thing has just gone <laughs> Well, you remember, oh, yeah. trains used to have those pills you put in it for the smoke. So we have the pills you put in for the engine to just sort of melt. <laughs> Sounds like something out of a James Bond film, mm. doesn't it? Oh, yeah, great. Um, yes. Um, hmm. There was a Man from Uncle episode where there was a model railway and he had to avoid two trains hitting each other by changing. You ever see this? We're changing the points as quickly as possible. No, no. no. I mean, look, you used to watch Man from Uncle. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I am currently watching the 18. I think it must be a generational thing. <laughs> yes. Anyway. Oh, 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 oh. He-Man. Remember He-Man? I do, yeah. He-Man yeah. figures. Hey, Andy, back. you completely oh. lost control here. Oh. Across in Canada. And I just, I ordered Castle Grayskull and He-Man and Star Wars. Oh, oh, Grayskull. But, yeah. There, there, oh, there's man. a mute button here somewhere. I'm just not. <laughs> You're too old for it. And he's too young for it. But we're like the same generation. So you, I, I'm telling you we're related. <laughs> I think there's, there's, some, there's Jewish somewhere in your history. I'm telling you, like this. Yeah. Next year, next next meeting, he'll have like a black hat, and he'll have just, you know the curls coming and stuff like that. Okay. It does. No, um, he likes me now. Andy, help us out here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I'm running out of questions. Um, so uh, how are we doing for time? Before we go, then <laughs> see what's in my cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> that is the worrying sentence I've ever heard. Is someone to turn around to the boss and say, "You've seen what's in my cupboard, haven't you?" Yeah. Oh, this is man. genuinely getting disturbing now, ladies and gentlemen. Why don't we sign off? There's uh, probably good time. Uh, yeah, I think I think we're probably on to a good one there. Yeah. So um, thank you very much yeah, for listening to these two raving idiots. Yeah. Thank um, you, everyone. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. We may or may not do this again. <laughs> no, we'll, we'll definitely do it again, but I'll probably really be in Canada that time. <laughs> oh, we can all. Yeah. And, and uh, there we can mute you. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So please um, remember December third for Hunters, the Hunters. Yeah. Buy guy Arabs. Buy yes. wagons. Sign up for the newsletter. Genuinely, that's where you'll hear about things first. And send us all your suggestions and yeah. your E1 stuff if you've yeah. got a preference on that. Get it in there. It will make us decide what yeah. we do. And um, we're the manufacturer that can. Okay. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye.